So we'll move on now to uh, item four. It's discussion relating to the denial of the plat for uh, uh, the super, we'll just call it the Super 8 Hotel located at 76th Street, um, just off of US Highway 169 and 117th East Avenue. And uh, Rodney was going to, uh, I guess, present that item. So is there anyone going to present that item? Bronx, do you have any uh, items that make this distinct from the others? Uh, just a bit of a, a refresher. Uh, for the sign lawn subdivision of the Super 8, again, this proceeded through multiple rounds of pre-development review with city staff, was reviewed by the technical advisory committee with all comments as addressed, was reviewed by the planning commission, and was unanimously recommended for approvals was recommended for approval by city staff and has no unresolved issues. I'd be happy to answer any uh, planning or technical related questions to that plan. Okay, uh, as far as the uh, area that they're planning to build in, was that, that area has been annexed, is that correct? Yes, sir. It, it was, uh, it, this area was already uh, within city limits. Uh, it was annexed a number of years ago. It already had uh, commercial zoning on the property. It was formerly home to the catfish country, right. uh, which the developer purchased the property remove the building and uh, begin the development process of bringing in a new business into Wausau. Well, I know that was a question that was brought up to me and I believe it was uh, uh, annexed, had been annexed for a long time, but I thought I'd uh, ask that question. Any other questions for Bronx? Yes. Bronx, is OLT involved in this property in any way? The applicant um, was Mr. Patel, uh, who is the owner of the property. Uh, I know of no involvement with Wausau Land Trust. I have worked with the applicant, the applicant's representative, in the form of his engineer and his architect. And those are the only folks who I've had contact with regarding this project. Thank you. Any other questions? Um, Julie, is there anything you need to add on this particular item? From a legal standpoint? No, Mayor, I don't believe so. This is what I've been saying is virtually identical to what I said on the Maple Glen item. Okay, all right. Uh, is the applicant here by any chance? I guess not, so uh, I guess we'll move on then to uh, uh, anyone sign up to speak on this item. Council, appreciate this. Uh, the second thing I want to talk about was a little bit about the ownership involvement because uh, there has been some questions about OLT's involvement in all three processes. Um, Maple Glen is in fact an OLT project, um, but it is a project that has been working many years before uh, before the flower shop that was in question, the bills were ever, uh, were ever, had ever come due. Maple Glen one and two uh, were the first phases, and at the time that they had started, began planning and doing Maple Glen one, they had an option on, the, on additional property for three and four. So the intent was, over time, as they got further into development, assuming everything went well, that they would that they would do this three and four. So these this is not a a a program that has been decided in the last six months or a year since since this bill was incurred. This is something that's multi-year project that has been going on. Um, the one thing about OLT that, that probably a lot of people don't understand is, is how big they are and how layered they are and how they're set up in, in divisions. Um, you know, I think because we're a small town, we think of it being, you know, we just talked to David, he knows everything that's going on, or, or Pete, or, or Greg. Um, they have all these different sections, so the individuals who handle the property management side of it, the side that would be writing this letter or dealing with Heather's flowers, uh, do not really spend time talking to the guys who are doing the subdivision. There's not a correlation between them. Everybody doesn't know what every other section in OLT is doing at any point in time. Um, so they are independent sections and they, and they deal that way. Um, if you, we've, we've had kind of a rough time here in the last few years. 
if you factor out what OLT has done for residential construction and um, Roush Coleman, you've wiped out 90% of all residential construction in this area. Um, both the, the Seho project and the Super 8 project had no uh, connection with OLT other than somewhere in the past, OLT had been involved either in owning the property or in helping facilitate the sale of it. They, the, this was not a contingent upon anything getting done type of sale. Both owners had had this property for an extensive period of time with no involvement with OLT. Thank you very much. Thank you, David. Who else sign to speak? Frank, sir. Hello again. Uh, this this one here really does take the cake. I mean, because even if there was alleged impropriety between city manager and OLT, uh, you could have found by going on to the Tulsa County Assessor site, you don't have to be a realtor to, uh, or even go downtown to find out who owns property. Uh, and even find recent changes in property ownership. Um, so if you can go on to OSCN.net, you can surely go over to the Tulsa County Assessor site and find out the trail of ownership of properties. Um, just like the Super 8, just like the, the Saho Clinic, Saho Clinic was bought back in 2008, that piece of property. So if the OLT is such an evil doer on that and in bed with Saho to, to do damage to this very fine community, they sure are taking their sweet time to do it in seven years. You know, so it's one of them deals where if you can go to that prospect to find out everything about anybody's past on OSCN.net, why don't you try going and searching some land records and see who owns what and when it was bought and when it was transferred. Doesn't take anything to do that. I can do it right here from the well, y'all can't up there, but I can get it back here. So anyways, that's kind of, if you do that, you'll find that out real quick. This development went through the process again. Nothing to do with OLT. Nothing to do with, really, even Mr. Ray. He put this over to his engineers. It should have been a formality to get approval on a final plat. I understand the questions. I understand wanting to get to the bottom of things. And I can even appreciate that in some aspects. But if there is such a desire and such a uh, suspicion of wrongdoing, let's go to the proper authorities and get it done and let's quit all this, you know, touch, 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 you touch me, I'm gonna get you here, I'm gonna get you there. Let's go contact the proper authorities. Tim Harris, the DA, Gary Jones, state auditor. Let's go do it. But y'all, by doing this gotcha stuff, you're hurting everybody. You know, this guy here may not ever want to come back in. I don't want a Super 8 hotel necessarily in Owasso, but you know what? It's his right as an American to go and buy that property, follow the rules as set down by the government, and then get it passed in order to build what he needs to to make a living. That's right. And that's why I believe Councilor Kelly is owed an apology, is because that didn't get voted down until it was found out that it could come back because it would have been not heard, so it could have come back lickety split. That's when it got voted down. That's why I say you owe the man an apology. Because you all could have just done nothing and tabled it. You went that was personal and vindictive. And that's why I said that. Y'all have a good one. Thank you. Anyone else? I'm sorry. Sorry. Ladies and gentlemen, again, thank you. Um, a lot of what I wanted to say has already been said, but just to recap, the Super 8 was not owned, or the Super 8 site was not owned by OLT. OLT had no involvement in the plat approval and yet it was still denied for unknown and undisclosed reasons. The city council voted that night to trample on the property rights of citizens and developers willing to invest in our community. Thank you, Trey. Good afternoon, sir. Council, thank you for having me up here to speak. It's just gonna be very brief. My name is Michael DeVilvis. I'm general manager and area general manager for Holiday Inns here in the Tulsa and Owasso area. I'm here speaking about the Super 8. Um, 
just a couple of months ago, I would say as early as December, I contacted both the Chamber of Commerce and the city trying to find out information about the Super 8. Nobody seemed to know anything about it. When did this process start? Because when I called the Chamber, when I called the city, nobody knew that the Super 8 was even coming. If we went through all these barriers and these hoops that we were supposed to jump through to approve all this information, when did it start? Because nobody seems to know. I'm asking anybody, including yourself. Okay, Bronx. Uh, we've been working with, with the owners of Super 8 for a number of months. Uh, they chose not to disclose the, the name of the hotel that was coming in until basically they wanted to be able to make the announcement uh, to, be have, to go through the chamber, go through uh, the economic development director in order to, to make that announcement on their terms. Uh, they have been working for us with a number of months. We don't have to know exactly what the name of your development is. Uh, and really that's handled at the site plan stage. To plan a piece of property is to subdivide a piece of property to create a usable lot for some sort of commercial entity. There is no requirement that you tell the public exactly what's coming in. Uh, any application, any materials we have at City Hall, once they're submitted, are always open to open record request. Uh, none was made, nothing was denied, and the applicant wanted to basically keep it a secret so they could make the announcement to the public about what their investment would be into a wall. So, I mean, that would be my, I hope I answered the question. Yeah, did that answer your question, sir? I apologize, it just sounds, I think you let this fine, sir. It just, I mean, the word secret. I mean, this is supposed to be an ethical process. I think that's one of the big things that caused Tuesday's blow up. It was, the ethicalness of what's going on here. When somebody requests what's you know what's being built, what's been approved, what's going on, it shouldn't be a secret. We should be let known that. I didn't ask the brand. I asked what was going in there. I don't think the emergency easement has even been approved for that location yet for uh, emergency entrance into the property because they only have one way in and one way out. I don't think the fire marshal has totally taken that into consideration at this point. So things are being ramrodded behind the people's back, being not allowing us to come forward and discuss it before it gets to this point. I don't so, think that's accurate. Ross, you want to address that? Again, I'd, I'd like to clarify. These are these are site plan issues. These are handled at the stage of the site plan. They go in front of our technical advisory committee and are reviewed by city staff. Uh, the requirements for the plan were done the correct way and there, there has been no deviation from the process uh, on this. These, these, these are the technical questions we get into with the site plan process, not the planning process. Planning process creates a lot, provides uh, connections to access, and provides utility easements that can be used by utility companies in order to serve the development. Site plan is where we really get into these issues. Okay. At this time, I will stand down, but I do still have concerns over the over the plat and the easements into the end of that property at this time. Okay, thank you. Yeah, thank Appreciate you. that. Um, Bronx, just one other question. In regards, in regards to uh, more or less what he said, the, with the, uh, we do have an understanding of what's going in there. It's just the branding that we didn't know about. Is that is that what you were yes, saying? We, we've known it was, it was going to be a hotel in, in our early meetings with, with the developer. They said we'd, we'd prefer to, to keep it a secret. We see that with a lot of new developments because folks want to be able to make a uh, splash. Yeah. Basically put it on Facebook, put it out there and, and make a splash and have a, a press conference and be able to get their name. I never feel um, that it's my responsibility to make that announcement. I, I prefer for them to and they usually ask me to, uh, to, to not disclose and sometimes they don't give us the name. We didn't have anybody signed to speak on this item um, uh, this past Tuesday, is that correct? Do you recall? Not that I recall, sir. How about the Planning Commission? Anybody signed to speak on those either? I don't believe so, sir. Okay. All right. That's all. Thanks. Anyone else? Oh, all righty. Now we need to uh, move on to uh, Item five. Mayor, if I yes, could sir. interrupt uh, at this point due to my personal interest with this topic, I'm going to recuse myself. Okay. Yeah, you. you let me know when everything's done, I'll come back in. All right, thank you. 
Uh, we still have a quorum here, so we can move on to item five, discussion relating to denial of the final plight of the small, small animal hospital of Owasso, located on the north of the uh, Bank of the Lakes and Compadre's Restaurant at 86th Street North at North 125th East uh, Avenue. The Small Animal Hospital of Owasso is my plaque just to, to give a brief refresher again. Uh, similar to the last uh, topic, this item did proceed through multiple rounds of pre-development review of city staff. Uh, this was reviewed by the Technical Advisory Committee with all comments addressed. This was reviewed by the Planning Commission and was unanimously recommended for approval. Uh, was recommended for approval by city staff and has no unresolved issues. And again, I'd be more than happy to answer any questions related to this. Just ask the same questions I asked before. Any anybody signed to speak of any concerns um, at either the council meeting this past Tuesday or the planning commission before? No, sir. Okay. All right. Any other questions? And the same question as I had on the other property: Is OLT involved in this in any way? No. Thank you. Okay. With that, any questions there, Patrick? Okay, uh, then I need to uh, know if anyone signed Okay, I, I just basically, at the, at the, in this phase, want to talk about the impact. And one of the things that's important, you know, we can, we can argue, fuss, and fight, and go out and park at midnight, and we change the knife if we need to. But what this is, what this is impacting is the citizens of Owasso, the families in Owasso, and that, and the business people in Owasso. Um, you know, uh, I, I think uh, some of the representatives from OLT talk, they, they pre-sell these lots. And we had 10 families who have basically doing a major lifestyle change, planning on being here, living in Owasso, sending their kids to uh, to Owasso schools, that we, we've completely changed their lifestyle. We've completely mixed up their entire life. Um, and that has an impact, and I care about that. Um, I care about the other two projects that basically were ready to roll, that have spent a lot of money in here and had construction crews uh, ready, ready to go and, and spend the money. They had those construction workers planning on, well, next week, honey, I'm going to work over here and we don't have to worry about money this week. Uh, and that's not going to happen now for some of them. Um, the jobs that, that we've affected there in addition, the businesses have already spent money, uh, you know, pre-lining equipment, uh, materials. Uh, some of them have already began hiring employees to, for continuing expansion. All those people are impacted by this type of a deal. And we've got to take a look at what this does for our future. Um, and those projects, and I think, I think Ricky Hayes talked some about this, um, you know, when somebody comes to get to a point of a final plat, you're talking an average of six months to a year in this process. You're talking of, of $100,000 or $200,000 to get to this process. I don't know how we convince people at this point in time, go ahead and spend this amount of time, go ahead and spend this amount of money, and maybe we'll pass your final plat. Yeah, you've done everything you're supposed to, everything that we require through the process, but we can't guarantee at the end of the line that your stuff will be approved. I don't think anybody's gonna buy that. Thank you. Thank you, Dave. Okay. Going on five years, it is owned by one of our exceptional small businesses here in town. So when my wife and I first what these actions have done, you wind up with a locally owned small business Owasa's Small Animal Hospital. They recently did a merger and plan to continue to grow that from a state-of-the-art facility in Northeast Oklahoma and to Owasso that is now delayed indefinitely until we can get this approved. For, for no, no reason was given. There is no reason why it should have been denied. We now have a significant delay. Uh, we can certainly answer those uh, okay. during this conversation. But one of the things I want to speak to, and, and Ricky hit on this earlier, is the perception now that's being you know, broadcast uh, out across not just our state, but it's being broadcast in surrounding states. Um, my company, which is an engineering firm based here in Owasso, uh, is working with about four different developers right now that are looking to locate in the Tulsa area. And, and of course, being in a Owasso-based business, we try to sell Owasso. 
That's, that's our goal. We want them here. We want the, the great developments, the multifamily housing, the great retail developments, all that stuff we want here to benefit us, benefit our schools, to benefit our, our city services. It's, um, it's difficult now to sell what we can provide them in speed to development. Um, I've been fortunate to be a part of developments in, in about 10 states and about 50 different cities. And I've seen um, cities that welcome you, and I've seen cities that do not even want you there. But you're, you go through the processes anyway. And those processes for development can range anywhere from 60 days to over a year. It's very common. The, the thing about a wassail that's easy to sell is how well staff works with you to meet their requirements. We have a really good set of codes to develop our town, and staff works as best they can to get you through those codes in a proper manner. And that is huge. When I can shave 60 days off a year timeline to open a business, that's a lot of money. Delaying these three projects any amount of time is a lot of money. The, the message that is sent is, and, and I understand the political infighting and all that, but the message that is sent from somebody outside these circles is that Owasso is not a friendly city to do business with. And that's a shame. That's a slap in the face to your staff. The staff that you didn't trust it to direct the development, to direct the engineering, to direct the construction, and all the infrastructure. The, the hurdle that we're going to have now as a municipality in getting people here is to put this behind us. You know, the, the great thing about how we work together in committees and, and how we work together in, in work session is to get these things out, is to get our issues out on the table and get them worked through. Um, it, it failed in this case. It failed to get worked through. If there's improprieties, there's obviously other avenues other than taking somebody that's innocent on the sideline and impacting them. There are other avenues to take them, that's what should have happened. If there are true improprieties, there are systems in place to address those. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Appreciate it. My name is Greg Strathy, and I'll try to not get too emotional here. Uh, we moved here to Owasso in 1993. Me and my wife have five children that we've raised here in Owasso. I've had Strathy Veterinary Hospital for the past 16 years. I've supported the community. I think anybody, I know most people out here in this audience. Um, I've been on school boards and the Chamber of Commerce and Kirby. I've been involved with the youth sports here in Owasso. I would beg a difference if there was anybody in Owasso that supported Owasso stronger than us from Friday night football games all the way through. We're a small business. I've known Dr. Chris Kelly and Dr. Brian Spriggs for years. We have outgrown our, our businesses. We can't go anywhere. We're losing clients every day to, to Tulsa for things like puppy daycare, boarding, and emergency services, and things like that. Dr. Spriggs and Dr. Kelly bought that land across the street four years ago. Been paying interest payments on it ever since. The economy hit, they couldn't build. So we started about a year or two ago talking about merging our two hospitals. They're just family owned. We're small businesses, we're not corporations. Most of us that know us, we did month to month like everybody else to make ends meet. We joined together and we merged January 1st. I moved out of Stratton Veterinary Hospital and we've been there for 16 years. Why do we do that? We had to get ready to get in our new facility across the street. We bought money from the local banks. You know, we went through all the planning commissions. We paid, you know, we're hundreds of thousands of dollars out right now, you know, with it. We have nothing to do with the Wasson Land Trust. I side with this side over here. We want to hold our elected officials to a high accountability. We want the answers. We want to question our city council. I'm not against any of the city councilors up here. Councilor Ross, you've been coming to our clinic the last year. We've given you free uh, nail trims for the last year at our clinic. You've been to our, our clinic. You've seen how our employees work. You know, with that, I'm not against you. What I just don't understand is how does our business that we're, we're not rich. We're not merging. We're not trying to build a new hospital because we, we're, we're making so much money. We're trying to provide a better service for our pets here in Wausau. They can stay in Wausau versus going to Tulsa. You know, with that, it saddens me because I just don't understand. J.B. Alexander's going to come up here and say, oh, it's the right thing to do because of Rodney Ray and other people in the community. What does that have to do with me? 
What does that have to do with our wives being scared to death now? How are you going to pay your debt back? We're in a small retail shop. I've shut down my business in anticipation of going across the street. We're scared to death. You know, come see how we live. You know, we're scared to death right now. And we don't understand why. Why? We, the planning commission, we went through all the channels. We had everything done right. And we're told we got both down on Tuesday because of the city manager. And we just don't know. I question that too, if there was mixed dealings, but my understanding had nothing to do with that. We bought the property outright, we're paying interest payments on that, we're trying to provide a business and continue to support Owasa. So I'm not against anybody, but we're scared to death right now. Where are we gonna go? What are we gonna do? We're just trying to grow. Good afternoon, my name is Sam Wells. I've been living in Owasso for 25 years. Uh, raised my family here, even went to high school here back in the 70s. Uh, I want to make this real short. Uh, I've read uh, the information that we've seen in the media, on social media, uh, and uh, uh, in the public space, uh, as far as uh, TV and radio. Uh, but and I keep hearing a lot of questions why this was voted no, and I haven't heard any answer yet. I would like to address Councilor Ross directly and ha ask you to uh, speak to this group and tell us why that you voted no on these projects. Thank you. I'm sorry, Patrick, what did you say, sir? I'm not prepared to make a statement right now. Okay. Of course. That's all, Mr. Mayor. Okay. That's all? Yes, sir. Thank you. Can someone let uh, the Vice Mayor know? Um, unless there's any other questions, I'm sorry. Is there any other questions? Mr. Chairman, I will say that I have consulted legal counsel, and unless I have legal counsel here with me, I will not speak publicly on okay. this matter. Okay. Thank you, Patrick. Thank you. Okay, um, we're at the point now, we're at the uh, end of uh, speaking on each item. I, I, I will leave the floor open now for any comments or questions from the council. And I guess, Patrick, you, you're not going to say anything at this point. Any Anything that you would like to add, Jerry? I have uh, a question, Chris? please, for Ms. Lombardi. Okay. If um, Councilors Ross or Brown did decide to resign, would that trigger the change of council that we would need to get um, an additional vote before that first week in May to minimize some of this damage to these businesses? That's a unique question, Councilor Mobley. I would have to I would have to look at that, but I can give you a preliminary answer of what I believe to be true. Anytime you change, um, anytime you have an election, even if it's the same composition of the council, that is a new council. Um, what would happen in the event a council member left, resigned for any reason, and someone else was appointed to take their place, they would have to be sworn in, and yes ma'am, I do believe that would be a new council um, that could consider a matter. So they do have the opportunity to relieve these businesses of some of the financial burden that they have created sooner than May 1st. Thank you. Okay. Um. Sorry, I'm kind of gathering my thoughts here. I apologize for the delay. Uh, first of all, I'll say that, oh, I'm sorry, Chris, do you have anything you want to add? I, my only thing I want to say is I, I really uh, want to give a heartfelt thank you to everyone on both sides that took the time to come out on a noon on a Friday and make your opinions heard. Uh, it's good for us to know and I think for everybody else to see and for the media to see uh, kind of the general feelings of Owasso in a situation like this. We can't do that without you. So thank you, everybody. Okay, I'll uh, just say as part of this meeting, we did call the meeting uh, initially, hopefully, to uh, try to find 
some alternative action that we could take to try to undo what had been done. And obviously, uh, Julie's already touched on the idea that that could not be done, uh, that uh, uh, we could not act any further than uh, this opportunity than just to discuss it. And I felt like I needed that. And I, again, I appreciate everybody. I'll echo what uh, uh, Chris said and uh, say thank you to everyone that showed up today and, and spoke their mind. But uh, certainly it was important for me to get caught up in what had occurred and so that I can kind of get the feeling of, uh, uh, of the issues that took place on, on Tuesday. And I apologize. I'm not, I don't want to apologize for uh, being with my family this week. Uh, that was important. We needed to do that. Um, but I, I wish that I could have been here Tuesday and maybe we could have avoided at least a portion of what had occurred. Um, nonetheless, um, I think we have two things that we could take, I, that I want to take away from this meeting. Um, one is the issue of uh, uh, the six month uh, uh, change, looking at changing the six month uh, uh, delay in the ordinance. I realize that there are some side effects to that. I would like, at least in the, I want to say in the next uh, regular meeting, but probably be best to wait until the work session to review that ordinance, to look at what triggers that we could maybe put in there that would apply to something like this, where you've got uh, uh, votes that were taken uh, more or less arbitrarily and, uh, and with no, no merit to to the issues at hand. We've got to look at some way, I think, to uh, try to fix this because um, we can't have, we can't do this again. This, this cannot be done again. Not if we're going to continue to grow. It's, this is, um, I think when Greg came up and spoke, that's probably what, what took my attention away because uh, uh, he did a very nice job of articulating the issues at hand for small business. Uh, these are folks that are taking risk into our community, um, investments into our community, and, and uh, I, I, it really does surprise me how many folks don't realize what comes out of small business into our community. Uh, obviously, there's the issue of jobs. Um, Although that's not the purpose of a, of a small business, the purpose of a small business is to make money, and part of that make uh, part of that uh, uh, portion that they make goes back to the community, uh, whether it be in the form of sales tax or other uh, forms. And so it it uh, uh, again it it really pains me to hear a small business person have to wonder what what's lying ahead for them, and I. I regret what happened. I really wish that I was here to try to at least stop the portion of that. I couldn't have stopped it all, but at least I could have stopped the portion of it. And I, uh, I regret that I couldn't be here for that. Um, nonetheless, um, uh, we need to fix it. And I think we've got at least an opportunity to look at this, the, uh, the six month uh, ordinance uh, to try to at least explore that. Um, that's one aspect of it I want to look at. And the other aspect I think is important is uh, continuing to try to work as a, as a city council. Um, obviously, and I think um, I heard the vice mayor speak on this uh, in a, in a uh, uh, report earlier that um, said that um, this is really dividing the council and that, uh, that's, that's horrible. Uh, I know we need to have different opinions. We need to have um, folks that ask the hard questions, and I think we all do at one time or another. We do. They can sit, people can say what they want, but I've been here now going on six years. I've witnessed a lot of city council meetings and can tell you that there's been some hard questions asked. And we've had good people that have served in this role and, um, um, and, and, and volunteering their time for good reason, and uh, because it's, a, it's our community, you know, we're supposed to be here to help serve our community. This is one of the few things that uh, I feel like that I can do, and um, because I don't, I don't have a small business. Um, nonetheless, um, 
it's, it's important that we respect the growth of the community. We only have a small window of opportunity for that. And uh, I feel like that uh, doing things like what we did Tuesday night is going to uh, um, have an effect on it. I, I appreciate what um, Mr. Charney said earlier that uh, he feels like we'll continue to go on down the road. I love that optimism. We need that. Um, nonetheless, we, we, we've taken a step back as far as I'm concerned. And uh, I'm going to do everything I can to make sure that we don't do this again. Uh, we can't have, just can't have it. And, uh, but again, uh, this has been a great education for me. Uh, I know we can't take any action today, but uh, I can promise you folks out there that uh, I'm not going to sit still on this one. This is, this is, uh, this is, this is horrible. And uh, we'll do everything we can to make sure that uh, it doesn't happen again. So if there's any, no other thoughts or questions or comments, um, I need a motion to adjourn, please. So moved. Second. Vice Mayor Kelly? Yes. Councilor Moberly? Yes. Councilor Ross? Aye. Mayor Bumbrick? Yes. Thank you all for being here. Spending time with us.